Welcome to the rebel.media and we go now to Montreal where Marc Lebouy, the publisher of Point de Bascule, that's French for the tipping point, joins us to talk about radical Islam in La Belle Provence. Marc, great to see you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. You do deep research that almost no one else in the country does. It's almost like you're the Quebec equivalent of our friend Jonathan Halevi, so it's great to bring you into the conversation. Let's talk about two recent terrorist news items or terrorism-related news items in Quebec. The first is a provincial liberal politician, an MNA as they're called out there, who advertised with a radical mosque. Can you give us the background on that story and what's happened recently? Yeah, the, the name of the MNA is uh, Mark Tanguay. Uh, he's uh, an MNA with the, the Liberal Party, so the, 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 the party in power right now. And um, there, was, um, there, there was a radio talk show host, uh, a radio show in the Quebec City area. Well, I think it's one of the most listened to radio show, More Live. I've been on it. Yeah, those are good guys. Uh, they yeah, love yeah. liberty. So what did they do, Mark? Well, basically what they, 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 they did is they, they went over this website because they saw an ad of this, this M&A on this specific website, which is a website of an Islamic center in the east end of Montreal. And uh, basically, uh, they went through some books. They, they, they discovered that there was some pretty radical, uh, radical writings that were being promoted there. Uh, there was a library specifically with books that were not exactly the most uh, the most moderate types of books. Give me an example of the of of what you mean by that, because there's different yeah. interpretations. Uh, what kind of things did these books actually say? Well, let's say it definitely it is not uh, Muhammad Gandhi's uh, radicalism. So uh, it was uh, it was books that were basically uh, promoting uh, or endorsing wife beating, for example. Uh, and that was mainly the, the, the main course where they were focusing on. But there's, a, there's other aspects also that were coming, uh, coming out of this. But mainly most of the aspect that they focus on was mainly the mistreatment towards women or the, uh, the, uh, the, the position that some of these scholars have on women and wife beating mm -hmm. and wife mistreatment and how they're treated uh, and unequally in terms of, of the law and the mm -hmm. courts and how they can invite... Uh, uh, they can invite violence and it would be them who would be uh, uh, attracting them towards them. Now, I, I know More Alive, they've, they've got a great style, they're very irreverent. They went through this and I can only imagine that a, a politician in the governing party would want to resist them. It would, I mean, I'm not going to compare them to Howard Stern because they're much more serious than him, but they have a great sense of humor as well. Yes. So, so how did the liberal MNA react? When well, Moray went after them at first, when they when they started the show, there was there was also because they consulted uh, they consulted us uh, to say if we didn't no, did not notice anything on the website. We noticed also that the the website was also promoting scholars, extremely radical scholars, and some of them were related to the Muslim Association of Canada, the Imam of the Shribi, which is an Imam from the local Mac over here, and he was referring to inside this website to scholars such as Zakir Naik, who's banned from entering Canada, mm. a promoter of Al-Qaeda, uh, of suicide bombing, wife beating, you know, we go, we go on, his, on his YouTube videos and we can see how mm -hmm. uh, the kind of positions that he's taking that are extremely radical and the justification why he's banned from Canada. There was also uh, one that you may know, his name is uh, Al Swindon. Uh, he's a notorious anti-Semite, uh, a, a known Muslim Brotherhood, uh, from 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 Kuwait, uh, very notorious anti-Semite, and saying some of the worst things, uh, almost, uh, and and uh, and also calls for the destruction of Israel, hmm. and specifically targeting the Jews. So that's a lot of there's a lot of extremism there, both in terms of ideology and the uh, counseling wife beating. I've, I I have, uh, I mean, that's not just saying believe bad thoughts. That's do bad things, commit a crime really, it's a crime to, uh, to commit uh, wife beating. Can you tell me what the reaction was from the liberal MNA when Moray Live brought these facts to the public attention? Not just that any politician should normally have about such a mosque, but the fact that this MNA was using, was paying money to advertise with this mosque. So it's not just, I mean, I think everyone in Quebec should condemn this, but this MNA had a particular responsibility because he had paid money for an ad, right? Uh, absolutely. There was an ad 
on the website. And uh, this guy also has a history because after, um, I won't go into the details, but there was, a, there was a, an election last year. And he basically took a position where he said that he wouldn't mind having a, a lady with a burqa attending uh, the Quebec National Assembly, hmm. which made, a, a, uh, which made the, his, uh, the, the, the Liberal Party in trouble. Huh. Um, now, this being said, coming back now, reset, he, in the afternoon, La Presse published his reaction to the Moret, uh, to the Moret uh, 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 radio revelations. And his reaction was he is not going to rep- uh, uh, he's not going to re- um, pull back the ad. He says that there's nothing illegal about what this center has done, hmm. and he felt that uh, there was no justification. And people should rather be more open-minded and have an open heart and see. Open-minded to wife beating, eh? That's a well, that's a bizarre thing for a liberal to say. He's open-minded to wife beating. Is that, exactly. is, am, I, am, I, am I stretching his words too far? I mean, I have not seen his comments in French and the press. Well, obviously what we're seeing here is a, 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 a politician who uh, has failed to do his due diligence, or if he did, mm-hmm. failed to take responsibility for his mistake in a certain way. Now, you mentioned the first reaction that La Presse jumped on. That's one of the larger French language newspapers. Now, did he later have a, quote, change of heart? Did someone who's a little bit more grown up say, uh, excuse me, uh, your first answer will not do? Was he corrected by the premier? Absolutely. Now, the premier Couillard is in France right now. And during a press release, which this was uh, was revealed uh, this morning, uh, during a press release, he basically says, no way. Uh, He must uh, he must take off this ad. We must not use public funds to encourage a radical, a radical, uh, radical speeches or, or any form of radicalization. Hmm. Uh, he says that free speech is, allows people to say the most stupid things, and this is not a, a matter of free speech, but definitely, Cuyar says, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, uh, basically says that we should not use public for, fund to encourage this type of radicalization. You know, uh, I have to say, we have talked to, um, I mentioned Jonathan Halevi before, He's helped us with our series, CanadianJihad.ca. And over the course of the years of the Sun News Network, Jonathan Halevi showed other mosques, other Muslim centers, and even street preachers handing out publications calling for wife-beating. I have a suspicion, Mark, that a great many mosques in Canada, not just in Quebec, but across Canada, indeed across the West, would have similar admonitions to beat your wife. We've seen it elsewhere in Canada because that is, that is, that is a fundamentalist Muslim prescription. I think that this is a good precedent that the Premier is setting, and it, it is a precedent that will likely affect a, ma- a great many mosques. We only have a couple moments left, but I want to switch gears and talk about Adil Charkawi. Now, he was arrested on a security certificate and held uh, in jail on suspicion of terrorism until he was that that certificate was quashed by the courts he did not go away quietly even though he was accused of being affiliated with al-qaeda he basically started teaching kids at college uh, in quebec can you tell me a little bit about adil charkawi and what the latest is on him and these classes on islam that he's teaching now because of the court procedure around charkawi and the fact that he won so many. He's been able to basically uh, milk uh, the, the legal system in a certain way. It took so much time. We basically have to do a reset, kind of not really refer to his past because because of the legal pr- procedures in a certain way. But we do so, know. So that security certificate was quashed. And- it was quashed and all references to the fact that where there was mentioned that he was with Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda cell, all these things, we're not able to... Uh, to refer to that necessarily. Uh, okay, so let's let's give him the benefit out of the doubt on those and say that any allegations about association with Al Qaeda have not been proven. Let's give him the benefit of that exactly. doubt. But let's exactly. talk. Let's talk about the real news we the have reset. just this week. Yeah, tell let's me the, the news reset. about uh, Al Adil Charkawi in the past week. So there's been six uh, six young who's left for the Islamic State. Uh, then we have, uh, there's, there's, the media has reported that there's been two individuals through pictures. They have been seen with Adil Sharkawi 
physically, uh, who attended a school called Les Compagnons. I think it would be the, the friends uh, of, uh, the, that's the name of the school, Les Compagnons. And in this school, he was basically teaching uh, Islamic principle, Islamic understanding. And he was, he, he was referring to an online library. And on this online library, there was all kinds of books and books that were uh, extremely radical, that were promoting jihad. Uh, for example, you had the, the one that was called um, uh, The Neglected Duty, which is the book that inspired uh, those who killed Anwar al-Sadat. Mm. And in this book, there's uh, reference to Imtamiya, there's reference to all kinds of, of offensive mm. jihad. So what uh, happened to these kids? Now, I'm calling them kids. They were young men and women. There, there's they, a variation, yeah. These kids are not, some of them were, were, did some petty crimes, but some of them uh, were girls and were models in schools. Uh, they, they, they're the kind of girls that every parent would, would, would wish uh, to, to have in a certain way because they were doing very well. And did they leave Canada? Did they go and join the Islamic State? What became of them? According to the reports, yes, they did leave uh, to join the Islamic State, yes, according to reports. And, uh, they, and they, so Adil Chakawi, who beat the rap on Al-Qaeda affiliations before, now some of his own students have gone, in, according to media reports, to join the Islamic State. Wrap it all up for us, Mark. What, okay, what I, is Adil Chakawi's role in school? How many, I mean, it sounds like he's still a public figure teaching yeah. Islam and frankly condemning, I saw a video clip of him condemning the Canadian government's response to terrorism. Is he a persona non grata, or do people still treat him as if he's a legitimate uh, public figure? Um, just to give you an idea, he started a anti-Islamophobia watchdog organization. At the beginning, his, his, his background was mentioned by the media, and as we were moving further along, the CBC, for example, was quoting his organization without any references to the background and the credibility of the organization. Um, so he had this, this organization, which is an anti-Islamophobia uh, website. Um, yes, there would be, up to very recently, there was still a lot of people uh, joining, going to his press conferences. Uh, he also, in his own mosque, invited uh, Hamza Shawi, the other imam that made the headlines recently, and that was the object of a center that was, that was uh, not allowed to open uh, by the mayor of Montreal. Uh, uh, so radical, there's a link between that Hamza Shawi and the rule radicalization possibility. Wow. So uh, what's also happening is uh, when you look at Hamza Shawi and you look at the individual uh, 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 who Sharkawi is also hanging out with, which is also Salah al-Manyawi. Salah al-Manyawi is a spokesperson for an Islamic umbrella organization that covers 70 mosques. Wow. In, in, in the Montreal, in Quebec area. That's incredible. I didn't yeah. know there were 70 mosques. That's a mark. No, they're extremely influential, extremely well, influential. And wow. still now, regardless of these news, we should not expect that this is going to fade down, the, the influence. Mark, it's great to talk to you. You bring out so many facts and figures and names. I don't think we can cover it all in one go, but you've certainly given us a lot to think about. Mark, just tell me what your website is for Point de Bascule. Can you spell it out for us? <laughs> well, well, point, you know, we'll put it on Bascule. the bottom of the screen. We'll, we'll put it on the bottom of the screen for folks. And if folks uh, go to Point de Bascule, see the deep research that Mark is doing, and also pay a visit to our website, canadianjihad.ca. Mark, it's great to talk to you. I'd like to give you a standing invitation to come on the show anytime you have news, because over the course of months and years, I get the feeling we will get to learn more about the individual names and imams and mosques that you described here. A lot of those names are unfamiliar to us today, but regrettably, I think we're going to hear a lot more of them in the months and years ahead. Great to see you again, Mark. Thank you for having me, Ezra, and, and uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic to see you with the, the, the Rebel Group. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank You're you. You're watching the Rebel.media.